class we are going to see about acid rain. Acid rain is generally caused by the emission of nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide from industries, from automobiles and from other sources which go up into the atmosphere, condense there, mix with the water droplets and fall down as acid rain. How does this happen? Now, naturally whenever rainfall falls into the ground from the atmosphere, you have some amount of acid. This is basically carbonic acid. How does that form? Let us see. So you have carbon dioxide plus water in the atmosphere coming down as rain and this is carbonic acid. This is normal. However, when we have a lot of industries and automobiles spewing out pollution into the air, then you have the formation of two different types of acids which you will have to write. They are sulfuric acid and nitric acid caused by sulfur dioxides and nitrogen dioxide respectively. Now how do they happen? Let us now look into the chemistry of acid rain. So, you have what is called an industry which is spewing out gases. You have your automobiles which has a tailpipe and that also spews out acid. And this is just, just one industry or one automobile. These are several industries and several automobiles together. From an entire city they spew out, from an entire industrial area or from heavily traffic congested area they spew out all the sulfur dioxide and they rise into the atmosphere. This is not natural. This sulfur dioxide mixes with OH minus radicals in the atmosphere to give you H2. This is an intermolecular reaction. H2SO2 then combines with oxygen to give you HO plus SO3, which is sulfur trioxide. Now, from here, the problem starts. Sulfur trioxide is now available in the atmosphere, and this is going to react with the water which is coming down as rain, mixes and forms H2. SO4 which is sulfuric acid. This is an acid. This acid comes down as rainfall into the ground. Right? Sulfur dioxide when released by either automobiles or from industries, they go up into the atmosphere, they come down along with the rainfall after reaction as sulfuric acid. Now there is one more very important chemical called nitrogen dioxide which is also released by human activities which are otherwise called anthropogenic activities. And this nitrogen dioxide goes up into the atmosphere, reacts with the water molecules there and comes back down as rainfall, only this time the acid that comes down is nitric acid. Let us look at the chemistry in brief. So you have nitrogen dioxide being emitted from various industrial and automobile sources and these react with the free hydroxyl radicals already present in the atmosphere to give you H N O3 which is nitric acid. Now nitric acid is coming from nitrogen dioxide and sulfuric acid is coming from sulfur dioxide. They are otherwise very popularly known as NOx and SOx. These emissions result in what is called as acid rain. Right. 
the effects of acid rain is what we are going to see now okay it is not that acid when it falls on you especially as acid rain when it falls on you is going to burn you it is not going to burn you acid rain but it is not going to burn you immediately in a prolonged period of time over a long time of exposure acid rain will create serious environmental effects for example when acid falls on a forest or on a lake for a very long period of time it is going to gradually increase the acidity of the soil in the case of forest or the water in the case of a lake and over time as this acid rain keeps falling what is going to happen is the environment is completely going to change into an acidic environment which means that the plants will gradually die they will wither and the lake if it falls on a lake the aquatic life will not be able to survive in an acidic environment and they will also perish and this leads to what is called as a dead forest or a dead lake where there is no possibility of life emerging because of the highly acidic conditions but this acidic condition is not coming immediately it is coming over a prolonged period of time in order to understand it in an even better, better way you should understand by what is called as an ph scale generally you have a ph scale ranging from 1 to 14 and 7 is the midpoint from 7 anything beyond 7 is generally considered to be alkaline in nature and anything below 7 is considered to be a acid generally rainfall exists in the range of a ph of 5 but pure water is at a range of ph 7 so i hope you understand let me put it on the board for you so you have a ph scale you have 7 here anything above 7 this way 8 9 10 this is considered to be a base or alkaline anything below 7 is considered to be and acid so 0 1 2 3 4 these are considered to be acidic in nature and the intensity of acid rain is generally around 4 4.5 or even in very rare, rare cases 3 in extreme cases it has been known that acid rain has fallen at a pH of 2 where the effect is very very severe now what are the effects once it falls down on natural environment we have already seen it leads to a dead forest or a dead lake fine but acid rain when it falls on buildings that also creates a problem right now many students are learning environmental science and engineering only because of acid rain because when acid rain fell on Taj Mahal the historical monument of India what happened was the marble started losing its color over a period of time this was because of the emission of toxic gases namely sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide into Taj Mahal's marble structure gradually discoloring it over time so a court case was filed and the resulting industries were shut down till they could afford an effluent treatment plant or an air pollution control device now keeping that aside you will be seeing some pictures of how acid rain is affecting the buildings and the monuments. Now, does acid rain affect human beings at all? Does it affect animals? Generally, animals and human beings, they don't stand still like this. They will keep moving. So, acid rain over a prolonged period of time will not have that immediate effect. But indirectly, it is going to affect the human beings or animals. How? It is through the food chain. Because gradually, when acid rain affects the lake or the forest, the food chain is going to get affected and because of that as you climb up into the ecosystem ladder gradually the effects of biomagnification and bioaccumulation will lead to a health effect in the human being or in other animals and also acid rain destroys the forests and the lakes as I told you and that in turn destroys the habitat and once the habitat is destroyed it collapses the entire ecosystem and that is why acid rain is such a serious problem even though the strength of the acid is very very less.